she painted this as a background to show his ancestry. Yep, it's a, it's a good painting, I think. If they want to see what Korea was like in color, they should see my collection. Korea Society in New York I wanted to uh, have an exhibition focusing on Korean hat. There are some people who collect the things and who wants to be so possessive, they do not want to show it to somebody else. Uh, I am the person who says, uh, I like to show to other people as much as I can. And as you can see, I have tried to pack as much as I can, uh, but since uh, carrying the things from here to uh, Greenbridge is not such a long trip. I think this is probably enough. But this uh, a collection of the all the paintings by uh, a few Western artists are disappearing. And uh, I'd like to just uh, uh, get it together and then uh, give an opportunity to the people to see what Korea was like or Koreans were like in 1920s and 1930s. It's wooden block print. There was no Western written material on Korea before 1880 or around that time. And you can buy for sometimes $50, sometimes $250. But again, these are disappearing because the children who have inherited it, says, I don't want to keep it. So they are disposing them in the internet. When the country finally signed a treaty with the United States in 1882 and opened the door to uh, America, they are one of the first Western countries, uh, then uh, people began to come to uh, Korea. And then they began to draw paintings, later on take pictures and uh, write books on Korea. When I got into collecting old books and uh, got to know Elizabeth Keith uh, and uh, read her books, translated those books, that changed my life. Uh, that I did not plan. Uh, it was not the result of any uh, decision-making in a grand scale. It just happened, one thing led to another one.